Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. Uh, several uh, announcements to remind you of. Uh, next Sunday is our installation and ordination of officers for the new year. And if you were elected in December, you can uh, be installed or ordained in two ways. Uh, you have received an email and to let us know. You can come and be with us in person or can join us by Zoom. So we're going to live stream people on Zoom. So who would have thought we would be doing that? But that's next week. So please let us know so we can plan accordingly. Uh, two weeks, a week from this coming Wednesday, uh, next week we continue our series on individual lives that illuminate for us some particular Christian truth, and the following Wednesday we'll begin uh, our study and reflection on the message from the week before. Also remind you, the flower chart, you're not here to sign up for flowers, but that can be done uh, on the website as well. Let us join in our call to worship. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. And in the temple, God's people say, Glory. The heavens opened, the Spirit descended, and a voice sounded, This is my beloved Son. Come, thou fount of every blessing, to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, Call for songs of loudest praise. He sings a melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mountain fixed upon it, mount of God's unchanging law. Oh, to grace how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let that grace now, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Let us pray. Eternal God, at the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized in his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, for he lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sins both together in unison and then in silence in our own way. Merciful God, in baptism you promise forgiveness and new life, making us part of the body of Christ. We confess that we remain preoccupied with ourselves, separated from one another. We cling to destructive habits, hold grudges, and show reluctance to welcome one another. We allow the past to hold us captive. In your love and kindness, have mercy on us and free us from sin. Fulfill the promises of our baptism so that we may rise to new life and live together in grace. Amen. Christ, 
A voice from heaven said to Jesus, So in Christ God speaks to us. You are my child, my beloved. With you I am well pleased. In the name of Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. children could pay special attention. Our verse comes from Mark's gospel, the story of Jesus' baptism, which ends with a voice from heaven saying to Jesus, you are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Today we remember and think about not only Jesus' baptism, but our own baptism. Many of you were brought forward when you were very little to the font which is just below me, and we place water on your head, claiming you for God, baptizing you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And part of the meaning of baptism is that you are claimed as God's beloved child. And so when things don't seem to go well for you when you're sad, Remember the words God said to Jesus and to us, You are my beloved child. With you I am well pleased. Let us pray. Eternal God, Eternal God. Help, us help us to claim your love, to claim your love in our baptism. In our baptism. Amen. You promise never to break your covenant with us. Amid all the changing words of our generation, speak your eternal word that does not change. Then we may respond to your gracious promises with faithful and obedient lives through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is Genesis 1, verses 1 through 8. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so, and God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. The Psalm is Psalm 51, verses one through 12. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. 
Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a, right, a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Sustain me in a willing spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the Testament lesson comes from Mark's Gospel. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Our text is from there, in the, the reading from Mark. In those days Jesus from, came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Let us pray. Eternal God, bless us with your presence this day, that we too might hear your voice speak to us. In your name we pray. Amen. One of my favorite Sundays here at Clarence over the last 15 years is the Sunday where we remember the baptism of Jesus. On this Sunday, the sanctuary has often been decorated to represent various themes of water. We have a little bit right here uh, in front of the pulpit symbolizing the waters of baptism. But on normal times, when we were all here, we would have three stations set up in the, north, in the chancel representing different meanings of baptism. And then in the past years, the congregation was invited to come forward to renew their baptism in, with some symbolic acts that changed every year. This year, of course, we cannot do this. This is the year when we will renew our baptismal covenant at home using words, not actions. Our usual celebration of the baptism of Jesus grew out of two graduate programs. If you remember when Debbie Katz served as our Christian educator, and that's over 15 years ago, she was working on a master's program at Union Seminary, and she needed to do a project that shaped some aspect of worship. I had just completed the thesis that was the final requirement of my Doctor of Ministry work, and my thesis focused on the meaning and practice of baptism in the Christian church. And so I was excited to work with Debbie to design a worship service that would teach the meanings of baptism. That Doctor of Ministry program had a profound effect on my whole approach to faith. For much of my life, I understood Christianity to be primarily a set of ideas and stories about God. 
I now believe Christianity is just as much or more about discipleship than scholarship. I've been convinced that our, our faith is shaped more by what we actually do than just what we think. It is our common practices that shape our relationship with God more than abstract thinking. In my course of work, in the course of research for that project, I came across, across a quote that really changed my paradigms. It's the words from a pope, surprisingly, that reflect the, reflect the core of this truth. In 1939, Pius XI wrote, People are instructed in the truths of faith and brought to appreciate the inner joys of religion far more effectively by the annual celebration of our sacred mysteries than by any pronouncements of the teaching of the church. Such pronouncements usually reach only a few, and the more learned among the faithful, feasts reach them all. The former speaks but once, the latter speak every year, in fact, forever. The church's teaching affects the mind primarily, her feasts affect both mind and heart and have a salutary effect upon the whole of man's nature. Now we've just experienced an example of what uh, Pius XI was talking about. If there's one part of the story of Jesus that people know about and understand, it is the Incarnation. Our children and adults know that story. Why? This is not just because they've heard the story of Jesus' nativity in Sunday school, which they have. Their knowledge comes from all of the practices that usually surround the Christmas season. This year we missed out on some of them, but think of all those usual practices. Christmas pageants, Christmas carols, lighting the Advent wreath, worshiping by candlelight on Christmas Eve, and many more. All of these practices not only reinforce the story of Christmas, they often help us experience the truth that God is with us on a deep emotional level. Now the situation is similar when we begin to focus on the sacraments of the church. You and I can only use words to poke at and toy with these mysteries. You see, baptism and the Lord's Supper, through signs, symbols, and actions, speak to us of God's grace at levels that are almost too deep for words. And on top of that, there's not only one meaning for them. There's multiple meanings for these sacraments. This morning, I'd like to focus on the meaning of baptism. And I say meanings because it has many meanings. The sacrament of baptism reminds us of several ways that God's grace is at work in our lives. And so today we'll just focus on three. One meaning of baptism is giving ourselves to God, a commitment. Baptism is a public sign that we have committed ourselves to Christ. Now since at least the third century, the church has baptized in two ways. One way has to been baptize infants, Still the most common practice today, when a child is baptized, it is his or her parents that make a commitment. They commit themselves to raise the child in the faith. And that act of baptism is really not complete until confirmation. The practice of confirmation developed as a result of infant baptism. It is a time when individuals who have been baptized as infants confirm their baptism by declaring their own decision to accept Jesus as Lord. When an adult is baptized, the decision for grace is even more clear. The person stands before the congregation and answers the question of faith for themselves. They are saying yes to Jesus. They stand before the congregation in the same way. Jesus stood before John at the Jordan and commit themselves to God. You see, at various times in our lives, we are presented with choices. We must decide either for God's will or against God's purpose in our lives. In baptism, we commit ourselves to follow Jesus. There are many ways to say yes to Jesus. Some people experience dramatic emotional experiences of God's grace 
while others slowly come to realize their need for the love that God can give. Listen to this song called, I'm Gonna Live So God Can Use Me, words that reflect a renewed commitment to God. The second meaning of baptism is the experience of forgiveness. Human beings through most of history have had a, a sense of guilt and failure in their lives. In so many religions there have been ritual cleanings. One of the uses of water is washing. Water washes away the dirt of living. After the Nathan the prophet confronted David about his adultery with Bathsheba and the murder of Uriah, her husband, David was overcome with remorse. The guilt was hard for him to carry. So David turned to God and said, Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy steadfast love. According to thy abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. At various times in our lives, we feel like David. There are times when we have failed a loved one, hurt a co-worker, or failed to follow God's call. Each one of us has experienced a time when we wanted to be, to be forgiven and to be given another chance. At these times, we remember the waters of baptism which can cleanse our souls. There's an interesting baptismal font at Belmont Abbey College in North Carolina. It's made from a huge stone which has been hollowed out to create a font. On that very stone, a little over 100 years ago, black slaves stood to be sold to the highest bidder. But today, the stone serves as a baptismal font, and in a description on the front says, on this stone, men were sold into slavery. From this stone, men are now baptized into freedom. In our baptism, God washes away our imperfections and gives us a new beginning. The water gives us a new beginning. Listen for the words of the next song, Wash, O God, your sons and daughters, words that remind us of the showers of grace that come from Christ. Wash, O oh God, your sons and daughters, newborn creatures of your womb. Number them among your people, raised like Christ from death and tomb. With them garments bright and sparkling, compass them with love and light. Fill anoint them, send your spirit, holy dove and heart's delight. Oh, how deep your holy wisdom, unimagined all your ways. To your name be glory, honor, with our life. 
Christ we worship, praise. We, your people, stand before you, water washed and spirit born. By your grace, our lives we offer, recreate us, God transform. The third meaning of baptism is as spiritual refreshment. Most living things need water to thrive. You may recall the, the woman that Jesus met at the well, and she was drawing water for the use of her family, and Jesus talked to her of living water. He said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of, this, of the water that I shall give him, it will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Jesus is speaking of his presence and his love that gives our souls sustenance. Jeremiah tells us that human beings are like cisterns that have a crack in them. These cisterns cannot hold water. No matter how much water is poured into them, they'll never be full. And so Jeremiah is telling us that human beings are the same. No matter how much we have, no matter how many experiences we enjoy, no matter how much power we might obtain, no matter our position in society, we will never be fully whole. For there is at the very core of the human spirit a need for the love of God. This thirst at the center of our being can only be quenched by the presence of God. So Jesus offers us his very self, the water of baptism reminds us of our need for prayer and worship and scripture that help to mediate God's presence to us. A mere belief in God is not enough. We need the active presence of his love in our hearts and at the core of our being. We need to open our minds and our hearts to his coming. Our singers invite us to come and be refreshed by God's grace, in the words of all who thirst, come now to the water. souls 
to the part of the service where we can respond to God's grace. Some of us today come having taken our faith in Jesus for granted. You know, we may have been part of the Christian church for years, yet the importance of our commitment has diminished. Others of us come today with some burden that weighs on our hearts. We remember some way that we have failed God or others in the past, and we still feel that guilt. Others come to worship today as you have regularly come in the past, yet God may not seem real to you at this moment. There may be a sense of dryness in your life. You desire to know Christ more fully. Friends, wherever our journey to this point, we remember that in baptism God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to Jesus Christ. God forgives us and frees us from sin and death. God unites us to Jesus in his death and resurrection and makes us members of the church, the body of Christ, and empowers us by the Spirit to join Christ's mission in the world. We have come now before God and the church to profess our faith. Let us answer again these questions. Do you believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you acknowledge that you are a sinner, forgiven only through the death and resurrection of Christ on your behalf? Do you, relying on the grace of God, promise to confess Christ publicly before others, to serve him daily, and to walk in Jesus' way? Do you promise to exhibit the joy of the new life in Christ, to share fully in the life of the church, to be faithful in worship and service, and to offer your prayers and gifts. Let us pray. Eternal and gracious God, we give you thanks. In countless ways you have revealed yourself in ages past and have blessed us with signs of your grace. We praise you that through the waters of the sea you led the people of Israel out of bondage into freedom in the land of promise. We praise you for sending Jesus, your, your Son, who for us was baptized in the waters of the Jordan and was anointed as Christ by your Holy Spirit. Through the baptism of his death and resurrection, you set us free from the bondage of sin and death and give us cleansing and rebirth. We praise you for your Holy Spirit, who teaches us and leads us into all truth, filling us with a variety of gifts. We rejoice that you claimed us in our baptism, and that by your grace we are born anew. By your Holy Spirit renew us, that we may be empowered to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory and honor now and forever. Amen. So friends, remember your baptism and be thankful. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Complete one. 
response today will be in our prayers of the people is be gracious to us. I will say to you, O God, we cry, and you, Rishabon, be gracious to us. Let us pray. Mindful of the many needs around us, we turn to God for help and healing, saying, To you, O God, we cry, be gracious to us. Ever seeking your glory, we pray for the church. Remember the people you have claimed by water and the Holy Spirit. Make us a sign of your life-giving grace. To you, O God, we cry, be gracious to us. Ever seeking your glory, we pray for the world. As we have witnessed the chaos of this past week, we ask that your spirit would calm the words and the actions of all people in authority, that tranquility and peace might be restored. To you, O God, we cry, be gracious to us. Ever seeking your glory, we pray for this community Send your Holy Spirit among us to speak truth in difficult times, to break through walls that divide us. To you, O God, we cry, be gracious to us. Ever seeking your glory, we pray for your loved ones. Speak your saving, healing word to all people who are sick, all those who live in darkness, all those who live with fear and comfort to all those who suffer. To you, O God, we cry, be gracious to us. Gracious God, turn our mourning into dancing and change our sorrow into joy, so that we may give you thanks and praise forever. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world, who taught us when we pray together to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, my God. 
now may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.